Hi, I'm Matt here at Soil Lab, and I've read all your comments, and we've got the next collection of garden soils based on your recommendations here that we've tested. I'd like to spend some time going through each of these soils today, looking at similarities and differences, some of the physical characteristics, and then finally, how I would have amended these based on our soil test results. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The soils that we tested were the Mother Earth TerraCraft soil here. We had the Vermont Compost Company Fort V. We had the Gardener's Supply self-watering potting mix. The Detroit Nutrient Company Great Lakes water only, as well as the Build a Soil 3.0 recipe. And you can see how they stack up in plant growth here. But let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about study design and then we'll get into those physical characteristics. In terms of our design, what did we do? How did we get this started? Well, we started off by putting equal amounts by volume in each and every one of our containers or simulated raised beds. Once we had an equal amount of soil in each of these, we added two pre-germed lettuce seeds and two pre-germinated tomato seeds to each of these. And then I maintained equivalent soil moisture levels in each of these for the last six and a half weeks. So right now we're six and a half weeks after seeding, so about six weeks of growth. So what did we learn? The first thing that I noticed or kind of paid attention to throughout the study were just the physical characteristics. And by that, I just mean really how well these took water. I'm gonna tell you that all of these took water really, really well, and they held on to water quite well also. The only small exception was in this Detroit Nutrient Company, Great Lakes. It was a bit hydrophobic, especially if I skipped just one day of watering. So that was something that I noted. Otherwise, these all seemed really, really desirable in terms of how they accepted uh, accepted water. Now, if we were to dive in to some of the other similarities and differences based on our MySoil test results, that's where we do start to see some differences. So what were the similarities first? Well, I think the first similarity that I'd like to, to point out is that every single one of these was suboptimal or low in their suite of micronutrients. And you can see that consistently here. So whether it was iron, manganese, zinc, copper or boron, each of these bag soils was suboptimal in those amounts. Now, the other similarity uh, with one exception was that all of these were in that optimal pH range. So you can see, although they tended to be slightly acidic, they were all in that optimal pH range. The only exception there was this Gardener's Supply potting mix was just below uh, the optimal pH range, and it was sitting right at 5.41 pH. And we'll get to how we would overcome that here in just a moment. Um, another similarity that we can see is that all of these were at or above um, what we would like to see for sodium. We see that in a lot of bagged soils, so a lot of these did have relatively high sodium levels, but not sodium levels that were really of concern. Um, so sodium should not have played too big of a role here. In terms of our other macronutrients, so those that would be phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, these were all within or above range uh, for those macronutrients. So none of those would have been limiting. Now that being said, I will mention, and you can see it here, is that the magnesium is just on the low end of optimal in our gardener's supply. And recall that one also had um, a slightly low pH. So what were some of the key differences aside from those that we mentioned already? Uh, the main differences we saw were really in nitrogen levels. And these are arranged from the lowest nitrogen levels to the high, highest nitrogen levels that we measured, and that's nitrate plus ammonium. So total nitrate levels in the Mother Earth TerraCraft was right at two parts per million. Um, so very low nitrogen inherently in that Mother, uh, Mother Earth TerraCraft. It was definitely below our optimal range. The Fort V, um, this one had right at 35 uh, parts per million. So if we were to look at that one, we would see that it is right at the bottom end of the optimal range. And we'll come back and talk about how these plants grew out here in just a moment. <clears throat> As we move to this gardener's supply, that one was at 65 parts per million. So right there at the upper end of our optimal range. Our Great Lakes soil here was at 230 parts per million nitrogen. And finally, this build of soil had 266 ppm nitrogen. Um, and you can see plant growth differences. So as these plants grew out, how did those nitrogen deficiencies or those nitrogen levels really express themselves in plant growth? 
Well, you can see this Mother Earth TerraCraft is pretty stunted. And in fact, it's the, all these started growing the same for about the first two weeks, and then everything started pulling away from this Mother Earth TerraCraft. Um, it just got a little stunted, ran out of nitrogen pretty early. Now, this Fort V soil has looked great. Uh, the plants, both the lettuce and the tomatoes, looked great throughout the study. But about week four, we started to see some of these nitrogen deficiency symptoms. And you can see those as this yellowing tissue on those older leaves. Similarly, in this gardener's supply, we started to see that yellowing, but we really didn't see it until about week five in the tomatoes. Now, here you can see a difference between the Fort V and the gardener's supply lettuce. We did start to see the lettuce start to become just a little bit chlorotic or a little bit yellowish or lighter green um, about week five as well. As we move over to this Great Lakes soil, the tomatoes look fantastic, um, but we had a really hard time growing lettuce in this soil. And in fact, that's my third seeding of lettuce. The first two seedlings got two true leaves, really small, um, and then they just, they just died. And so we kept replanting it. I don't have a definite why for you, but I suspect that this might be a little bit salty. And that's not sodium salts, just some other salts. I did see some white deposits um, at the soil surface when that soil dried down slightly. Um, when we look at the Build-A-Soil 3.0, um, this grew just slow and steady throughout the entire study. In fact, it was kind of a little behind for a while, but you can see plant health, growth, development, um, and it's really compact and bushy, just made a great, great plant. So this uh, performed really well at those, uh, at those nutrient levels. All right, so we know how they grow, we see how they grew. How would I have treated these if I had gotten these, this soil test data and decided to fertilize or amend these? Well, this, let's start with this Mother Earth TerraCraft. We know it had good macronutrient levels. We certainly could have added some micronutrients to any of these uh, to give that soil health a little bit of a boost and perhaps plant health as well. But really the Mother Earth TerraCraft, it just needed a nitrogen boost. So I might put something like a 1200, either a blood mill or a feather mill out to get those levels up. Honestly, I probably would have made the same recommendation for this Vermont Compost Company, Fort V. It just really needed a nitrogen source. There's plenty of phosphorus, plenty of potassium, and other macros. As we move over to this gardener's supply soil, remember it was a little bit low or below uh, our optimal pH range, is also at the bottom end of that magnesium. So I probably would have given it just a little bit of a boost um, of dolomitic lime. So that would be calcium, magnesium, and would help raise uh, the soil pH a little bit. Um, and then I would have probably gave it about, at about week four or five, a little bit of nitrogen as that 1200 blood meal or feather meal as well. Um, then we get to our next two, um, the, the Build-A-Soil as well as the Great Lakes Water Only. Neither of these really needed any supplemental nutrition, so I would have just monitored plant health throughout the grow to see if they needed a top dress. Now, if in fact this was salt that was affecting, uh, affecting that lettuce, I would have just needed to leach this out. And in these containers and where I was growing them, I didn't have the ability to leach those salts out. But certainly if you're seeing some stunting when you don't expect it, you're seeing that white on the soil surface, go ahead and just try to move those salts um, out of the root zone. And I just didn't have the opportunity to do that during this study. So I hope that this has helped. Um, maybe you're using one of these soils. Maybe you're trying to choose a soil for the upcoming season. Hopefully this can help drive success in your garden. Hit that notifications button and be sure you're subscribed so that you can see our next collection of six soils that were suggested by our viewers as well. As always, it was great to see you in the lab and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.